If you have read any comment section on anything vaguely Linux related recently, you probably have heard about NixOS. Seriously, NixOS is the new arch when it comes to telling people that you use it. And I will admit I was very skeptical about NixOS. It just looked needlessly complex and I couldn't see what the benefits were. But after trying it out, learning the basics of how it works, I am jumping on the Nix train. So let's see what it is, how it works, how to get started, what you'd want to use it, and also how to get started with a better remote desktop tool, thanks to our sponsor. This video is sponsored by Chasm Workspaces, a fantastic tool to stream operating systems, desktops and apps straight to your browser. They just released version 1.13, which adds a workspace registry for installing and sharing open source container based images, including the linuxserver.io collection of web desktops that are now streamed using Chasm VNC. Additional updates include enhanced mobile support with progressive web apps, and you can now stop or pause workspaces to restore them later. The Chasm Workspaces Community Edition can be self-hosted, but they also have a cloud service if you prefer. So to learn more about Chasm Workspaces, click the link in the description. So let's begin with the obvious question. What is NixOS and why should you care? NixOS is a Linux distribution, of course. And though for some reason I thought it was relatively new, it turns out it's actually older than Ubuntu since it started in 2003. It's a fixed release distro with two releases per year, but there's also a rolling variant if you prefer by moving to the unstable channel. We'll see how to do that later in the video. What NixOS does differently though, is that your system when set up is completely and entirely reproducible. Everything you use is defined in a configuration file that is used to build your system. All the services, packages, options, partition layout, hardware, everything is in this config file. Well, apart from your user files, documents, configs, and stuff like that, you still have to back these up by yourself. Still, it means that if you back up just that file and use it to reinstall your computer, or even install NixOS on another computer, you will get the exact same operating system with every user, service, package, and app installed and configured as you like. Again, apart from your personal user documents and dot .files. And now you're probably thinking, cool beans, Nick. Okay, maybe not. No one says that. You're probably thinking, what the hell is this guy talking about? This looks weird and complicated. And yeah, NixOS is not for Linux beginners at all. It's a command line required sort of distro. But in short, the benefits are really amazing. First, your system is insanely stable as you can always roll back to a previous configuration or even a previous version of a package or an app. Second, your system can be replicated as is with just one simple file that, yes, will take you a bit of time to configure exactly how you like. And if you're a developer, your eyes might be sparkling right now because yes, that's one file to replicate your entire development environment. And third, you can never get into dependency hell. Packages all declare exactly which versions of each library they need. And these versions are all installed side by side and kept, not erased by newer versions. Which means that if a program needs a newer version of GTK, it won't replace your whole main GTK installation and break everything else in the process. It will install this new version alongside the older ones that you actually need for other programs. NixOS is very, very hard to break. You would really have to do it on purpose. And so the use case is, I want a system that I'm able to replicate on the same computer when I reinstall or on an entirely other computer with different hardware and I want the best, most stable package manager I can find and I'm okay with using the command line and editing text files. Okay, so let's see how you can install NixOS. The process is pretty much identical to what you know. You download an ISO, they have a GNOME one and a Plasma one, although you can also install other desktops or no desktop at all. You burn your live USB as usual and you boot from it normally. You get the classic Calamares installer and a screen to pick the desktop environment you want to use. I went with Plasma for a change. You can also pick if you want to use non-free software, by default it won't. And you're done. You have a usable system with a graphical desktop. It uses X11 by default, but there's a Wayland session if you prefer. 
Now it's time to configure your system to make it do what you actually want to do and save everything in case you need to reinstall or you want to duplicate that system onto another computer. Now the basic install will give you everything you need, but you might want to go into more detail. And to do that, there's the main configuration file in slash etc slash nixos called configuration.nix. This file uses its own specific syntax that is entirely functional. It describes everything the system uses and with which options from the hardware, the bootloader, the services, the packages, the apps, the users, everything. And this config file is then used to build the system that you use. Every time you make a modification to this file, you rebuild the system based on this and the system automatically installs everything you need for that configuration to work. Which also means that if you give that config file to someone else, they'll get the exact same operating system as what you're using. By default, after my graphical install, that file is relatively simple. First, it includes the results of the hardware scan NixOS performs at install to make sure that all the hardware is detected and handled properly. Then the bootloader options are set with systemd and EFI, followed by the host name, enabling network manager, the time zone, the locales, x11, the login manager and the desktop environment, the various services and my user and its applications. And this file is super basic. It works for a base system, but you can do a lot more with the Nix syntax. If I wanted to add something else, for example, I would like to run a few VMs using VirtualBox. I could just add the line virtualization.virtualbox.host.enable equals true. And I would also like to have gparted part of my main system build. So in the config file where my user is defined, I'll just add gparted to the list of packages. Now to make sure that this config is actually applied, I can just run a command nixos-rebuild switch and my configuration will be parsed and the system will rebuild itself using everything in this file. It will then enable this new configuration for the currently booted system and make that the boot default. And now if I open my menu in KDE, I can find gparted and VirtualBox, both installed and ready to use. Did you notice how I didn't need to use a graphical app store or a command line package manager? That's because since I declared that I wanted this on my system, when I rebuilt my system, NixOS automatically fetched those packages and all their dependencies so everything would work well. Now, if I reboot my system, I also now have two entries in my bootloader, the previous configuration and the new one with my gparted package and VirtualBox. These entries are called generations. This means I can always reboot to my previous working configuration if I mess something up, which is a very nice safety net. And that's the basics of NixOS. With one single file, you declare everything you need. The system is built using that configuration to install and configure everything according to what you specified. And that config file will always create the exact same system for any user on any device. Now, of course, you will have to learn this syntax and the various services, packages, and configs you can set in there. And it's a lot more powerful than just enabling or disabling things. I can add conditions or abstractions to make my file truly portable for other PCs that might not have the same hardware. And don't worry, if you mess up the syntax, when you run the nixos rebuild command, you'll get warnings and errors that tell you what doesn't work and the config won't be built. And if you're still worried, you can also just make that configuration work for right now, but not make it the new boot default, which means that if anything breaks, you can just reboot and you'll reboot onto the working system. Of course, all of this requires root access to edit the main config of the system. But if you don't have root access, or if you don't want to add programs to your main reproducible config, but you just want to test them out for now, you can also install packages as a regular user, using the Nix package manager. Or you can add Flatpak to your config file or run app images. But installing programs will mainly be done using the Nix package manager. Which means it's time to learn how to use it. Learning montage. Nah, I'm kidding. It just took 10 seconds thanks to the super exhaustive manual that is included in the distribution or that you can find online. The Nix package manager works on any Linux distro, but also on macOS, WSL and more. It's 
pretty easy to use. If I want to install, for example, OBS, I will just type nix-env-ia nixos.obs-studio. The dash i is the argument to install, and the capital A is to tell the package manager to install using the specific name of the package, instead of looking through the whole repo, which is way slower. If I want to remove the package, I can use nix-onv-e obs-studio, and it will be removed. Note that installing packages with the Nix package manager doesn't add them to your config file. So if you want these packages to be part of your main config, your reproducible system, you need to add them in the config file instead, either for your user or for the whole system. And that's about it for the basics of the Nix package manager. Nix doesn't have a snapd package just yet, so there's no snap support. Oh no, what are we going to... Oh wait, you said snaps. No, that's fine, no one cares. And as per what is available, the Nix package repos has 80,000 packages, which is almost as much as the AUR. So chances are you will find anything and everything you need in there. Okay, now let's see how to update the system and all its packages. NixOS works with channels. By default, you'll use the stable channel with tested packages that get security updates only and major feature updates when there's a new release of NixOS every six months. To update, you can just run the command sudo nix-channel update. This will pull all the latest package versions from the channel your system uses. Then you run the nix-rebuild switch-upgrade command and your system will grab every new version of every package and rebuild the system based on your configuration file. And this sounds like it should take a lot of time, but it doesn't. Like rebuilding your system after changing a config generally takes like 10 seconds. Important to note, the new version of a package is installed alongside the old one. The new versions are the ones that will be used, thanks to a simple symbolic link system that always points to the newest version of a package. So in your menu, you will only see the latest version of an app. But this has to use a lot of disk space over time, right? So fortunately, you can clean that up. You can run a command to clean up the old generations, the old system builds that you have that you're not using anymore, and then run another command to delete all the older versions of packages that have been linked to this version, but that you're not using anymore. NixOS isn't a bleeding edge distro. So by default on the stable channel, you don't get the latest and greatest packages. To get newer packages, at the risk of having a less stable system, you can switch to the unstable channel. They are the latest tested updates and they will also get you access to packages that aren't yet in the stable repos, like for example, DaVinci Resolve. But that's just the tip of the iceberg. Nix also has flakes that let you basically provide an entirely configured project that you can download and reproduce on your system. It has Home Manager to create a Nix config file just for your slash home directory. And there are tons of options for the Nix package manager and the Nix configuration file to really tailor everything to your needs. So who should use NixOS then? Well, for developers, it's a god tier distro. You can just completely fine tune your config file to have the perfect development environment and then just give that file to all the other developers in your company that will then have the exact same development environment completely set up. For workstations, you can deploy the exact same system to all your users. For someone who just wants a super solid system that can always roll back and that is completely free of dependency hell, NixOS is also the perfect choice. And if you tinker a lot with your distro, your services, all the systems you use and you run, NixOS lets you grab that exact configuration and never lose it as long as you back up your one config file. NixOS is an amazing distribution, but not for beginners. If you come from the everything is graphical world, then you're gonna have a rough time. You're gonna need to learn the syntax for the config file to make the most out of this distribution. And you're also going to have to learn how to use the package manager through the command line. It's not like it's super difficult, but it's still a big barrier if you're expecting everything to have a graphical app. So NixOS is now the top contender to replace Fedora 38 on my editing desktop because it will let me completely roll back to a usable system. I do not have time to debug anything when I need to edit a video. And also I can just save all my programs, DaVinci Resolve, the Nvidia drivers, everything to the config file. So I know that everything will work in the event of a reinstall or if I move to a new editing rig. 
And if you need to move to another computer, fortunately, there's our sponsor. Tuxedo makes laptops and desktops that run Linux out of the box. All the hardware has been picked specifically to be compatible with Linux. You can buy their devices with a variety of popular distros pre-installed, or you can just install your own and know that it will work perfectly. They have a big range of devices from the smallest, most affordable Ultrabooks to a giant workstation, a gaming tower, a gaming laptop, and everything in between. Every device has a lot of configuration options and a lot of customization options as well, with your own logo or your own keyboard layout. Now, they're based in Germany, but they ship to most countries in the world. And also, all their laptops are openable, repairable, and upgradable, including the RAM, the SSD, the battery, and even sometimes the wireless card. So if you plan to replace your current PC and you want to run Linux on it, stop buying devices made for Windows and hoping that they're gonna work with Linux. Just click the link in the description below and buy a Tuxedo PC. So, thanks everyone for watching the video. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, don't hesitate to like, to subscribe, to turn on notifications, to write a comment. And if you didn't like the video, well, there's always that thumbs down button and the comment section to let me know why I'm terrible. And if you really enjoyed the video and you want to support the channel, there are plenty of links in the description to do just that. From LibraPay, Patreon, PayPal, YouTube thanks, YouTube memberships, you know how all of this works. So thanks for watching and I guess you'll see me in the next one. Bye!